right, today I got a 2004 F-150 that has a right front caliper that is seized up on here. The actual pistons inside the caliper are seized, not the pads or the caliper slide pins on here. And these are pretty common, especially in the bigger trucks like the F-150s and the Super Duties. They go through a lot of heat cycles and they're prone to... Uh, um, you know season up on there whereas an escape or let's say a Taurus you may never see it for the life of the vehicle So you're probably wondering why do we need a video on how to replace a caliper? Don't you just unbolt it swap the line over and bleed it out? Well, you do but they're in true Ford tech make you local fashion We're gonna be going through tips and tricks on how to do this for the more troublesome ones that you may experience out there Like be more thorough with my videos so this one today is, um, like I said, frozen, but it won't even come off. You cannot even get it off of here. You try compressing with a C-clamp, it's unbolted obviously. I have pry bars in here, everything else, and we can still cannot get this off of here. So I'm gonna be showing you tricks on how to get that out of there so we can swap it out. And also, I'm gonna give you a, a few tips on how to test if it's the caliper that's seized up or something in the line that is not allowing the pressure to come back out once the pistons release after you let off the brakes a little bit. They're supposed to return just a little bit. Well, if they can't, there may be the pistons themselves seizing up or something in the line or um, the hose that's not allowing the fluid to backtrack so in order to do that all you got to do is go over here there's a bleeder right here you can see it right there you unscrew that and if fluid just shoots out of here you know that something in the line is not allowing the fluid to return back to the master cylinder that little bit like that if you unscrew this it just dribbles out like normal a regular leak you know you're caliper which is a lot more common is actually seized so I'll show you real quick I already started uh, taking this apart and clamping it down I figured this would be a great example to show you guys what to do in this kind of situation where it just won't come off so I got my wood clamp on here you can use a C clamp whatever and you're just tightening it and you, you can tell right now I mean this thing is seized I'm tightening like crazy and it just won't move So then you come over here, with your pry bars, and you're trying to trying to get it out of there, and it it moves a little bit, and you're yanking on it, and and you up here, and I got a long pry bar on here, and uh, it just won't freaking move, you know. I mean, you're yanking on it, top, bottom, working it back and forth, and it just won't get past there. And the main reason, especially on these, they're more, more prone to this. Other, you know, pads and, and models have this too. See these two right here? These two, like, little nubs right here? Well, they're on the other side too. And the pistons, they self-center. Well, they center inside of these. So if you don't compress the piston in far enough to clear these, you're going to be fighting it off. Now there's a few things you can do to test and see if this caliper is seized or not. What you can do is jack the front end up with your wheel and tire still on and then you're going to spin it and you should be able to spin it with some resistance but you should be able to spin it quite easily with one hand. Even with a 4x4 engage it doesn't matter, it'll be just an additional drag but you'll be able to do it. This one, move it back and forth, would not freaking move at all. The other thing you can do is test the temperature of the rotor itself after you've gone for a test drive. You come back and before you even pull the wheels off, you can go ahead and test it right about there in the same area on both sides and make sure the temperature is within, you know, 15, 20 degrees of each other. And if you see one side it's a lot higher than the other one, you can tell it's, it's most likely seized. Now the other thing you'll notice when you get down this area and you start checking stuff is you'll notice that burning smell of the friction material on the pads. That's a dead giveaway also. Usually it's after you go for a drive and it's nice and hot. You get down this area, you start check stuff. Maybe you're doing the wheel spin check, right? And you'll smell it and it'll be a lot stronger than the other side. This one's cold and I can still smell it. I stick my head in here and it's just overpowering because it's been going for so long. So since we can't get this caliper off here, it's stuck on here, we'll compress anymore. What we're going to do is take off the caliper bracket and the caliper itself together. We're going to knock the pads in and then we're going to have you know, free access to pull them off and separate the two of them.
goes. And hopefully I can show you, man, this thing's strong. Okay, so there it goes. And hopefully you can still see this. Yeah, you can still see it. So we're gonna knock these pads in a little bit like that. And same thing over here. You see how they're all pushed in now? And then we should be able to lift, well, it's strong. We should be able to lift it off of there and separate the two of them then. Now the other thing that's common is for the pads themselves to stick inside of the bracket. Corrosion gets down on these clips right here and then it grows and it puts pressure down on the pads and they can't slide back and forth at their own free will. Now for as bad as these smell, they are actually not too bad. This is how a pad looks normally for breaking. They'll have a slight sheen to them like that, but they're not completely glazed over and cracked from the heat. So all you gotta do is take some 60 grit sandpaper and we're just gonna scuff up the surface on here and then blow it all out some compressed air and then the pads will be fine. And then of course while it's off, we're gonna check these. Make sure you can spin them by hand and plunge them in and out by hand also. This one, I could plunge just fine. This one's a little bit harder. So I'm gonna take it out, clean them up real nice for the guy and uh, get it back together and get it done right. Now before I put these pads back on, like I said, I'll make sure that these are not glazed or cracked from being severely overheated. This right here, this way this looks on here on the surface, is totally normal for you know a brake pad that's been used before. So you use 60 or 80 grit sandpaper, something like that, and we'll sand it back and forth like that. And if you have a sandy block, that's even better. And then I'll spray brake clean all over it and get all the dust and garbage out of there and some compressed air both sides and get it as clean as possible so that it looks something like this when we're done. Now going back together, your rotor will probably be flopping around like this, getting in your way. You're trying to put the caliber bracket on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the nuts back on here from the wheels, and we're just going to snug them down so it holds it in place, flat against the uh, the hub face on there. Let's do them evenly, like that, slight pressure, and that way it's not flopping and it kind of spins true. Now going back in, you're going to want to put blue Loctite on your bolts that bolt the caliper bracket to the wheel knuckle here. So get those ready. And we're actually going to change out the bracket and caliper all together, all new. A lot of times the caliper is the same price, if not more, than a caliper and bracket situation like this. And as you can see, they use four cores. This is a, this is a reman unit from the local auto parts store. But they do use Ford cores on here, and we've never had a problem with these. So as you may notice, inside of here, there's no pads. The reason why I do that is because I want to bolt this up, have it sitting there, swap the, the hose over, the brake hose, lead it out, and prevent any kind of brake fluid from getting on the pads inside of here, whether it comes down through here, here, whatever. There's a major leak somehow, and then our pads are soaked in brake fluid. Just put it back on there like this, bracket and caliper, get the hose swapped over and bled, and then we'll worry about pads. Just line it up on here. I do the top bolt first on any caliper bracket. It's the easiest one to line up. And then your bottom one will just line up a lot easier you just pick up on it just a little bit like this and you'll feel the bolt fall right in and then you can tighten it down now if you're going to torque any bolt in the brake system it should really be the caliper bracket bolt. That's the most important one. These ones, you can tighten them down by hand. You can feel they're tight. You're good to go. These little bolts right here for the caliper themselves. But the bracket bolts, those are usually high torque and you want that to be solid. And these ones on this particular vehicle are 145 foot pounds. Okay. All 
All right, so as far as swapping a lino, there's a few things you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have on hand, ready in your cart, before you ever start pulling the line off of here and introducing air into the system. You're gonna to wanna to get the plug out of the new caliper. Like that, make sure it's clean. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a new copper ceiling washers on hand usually the new calipers come with them a little hardware kit we're gonna unscrew the bleeder on here okay I already broke torque on mine we're gonna take it out and we're gonna put a little bit of silicone grease from Ford on the threads kind of like this we're gonna smear it on there without fully taking it out right and then we're gonna screw it back in. And that'll kind of seal around the threads, like a thread sealant. Um, so when we're, when we're bleeding, we're not introducing air into the system and we can get a true bleed on there and look at the clear hose and see if there's any air bubbles left. So for right now, we're gonna screw it back in with the grease all the way around it, like that. Now a few other things you're gonna to wanna to have on hand before you open that line. You're gonna have a cat claw or flat blade screwdriver, or something like that. Once this bolt comes out, we're gonna have to scrape off the washers off of it to be compressed onto there. So we need to pop those off of there in a timely fashion. And then make sure your bleeding device, whatever it may be, is on hand and ready to go also. We don't want the whole system draining out just because we went to go find the brake bleeder. Now I like to be as fast as possible to prevent excessive fluid loss and of course the less air that goes into the system the better so I use an impact to take it off of there and uh, get back on there fast and we'll do it down here and out of the way so it's gonna drip into my pan once you take it off and we start getting those washers off and all that <laughs> And you may get lucky your washers will fall right off and we'll take our banjo out and we'll clean those now these ones the washers are falling right off but what I'm trying to say is you might need a scraper to pop them off there because they get stuck pretty good in there make sure you clean your bolt up get that ready and then we're going to clean the line on here where the washers mate to it so there's no problems and there's no leaks in the end. One washer goes on each side. So we put that through. And then you put the other one on the other side. And start threading it in by hand. I'll snug it down. <laughs> just so we can stop the leaking. Let's loosen our bleeder, about three turns, and then we're gonna put our favorite bleeding device on there and get that going. And then while that's sucking it down, we can torque this. And the torque spec on these banjo bolts, is these flow-through bolts they call them, is usually between 25 and 35 foot-pounds. This particular one is 26. Make sure you tighten on your bleeder screw, and if you have a cap for it, like I think we do for this one, you're gonna to wanna to throw it back on there. It keeps the threads clean, and of course the end of it clean. If you ever need to bleed brakes in the future, anything like that. Now after this, all you gotta do is take your two bolts out, flip it up here, out of the way, get it on a hanger, whatever you gotta do to get it out of the way, and you do a brake pad installation like normal. Now before you go on a test drive, make sure that you have the reservoir full. Come in here, start the vehicle. So we have vacuum assist, 
and then make sure you hit the brake pedal because it's going to go all the way to the floor. Hit it a couple of times so it pumps up. So it feels nice and firm again. Now once you have a good pedal on here, go out and check your master cylinder. Make sure it's within the min and max marks on there and it's all topped off. And then as a pre-check before the road test, I would go out and uh, check that brake caliper and make sure the hose or the bleeder, anything like that is not leaking on there. And then you're, uh, you're safe to go for a road test. Now I know this job is simple enough, but I just wanted to go over all my tips and tricks I've learned throughout the years that makes this job go ultra smooth. And I wanted to kind of pass them on to you, whether it's be your first time or your fourth time or your last time. And uh, you wanted to make sure you do it right and uh, have as few problems as possible. Um, this is what I've kind of honed in as being the procedure I use uh, to get it done.